Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's May 11th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and it's going to wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Friday, so we'll wrap it up today. But let's get started here because I got a lot to talk about today. I want to um, talk about a few things, but anyway, uh, here's our daily chart with the uh, envelope band sl slash strategy that I use on here. And you can see we're still just chopping sideways right in the middle of this sideways stuff. And we just had an inside bar with stems on both sides. And just overall, it's just another um, just another sideways mixed trade. I mean, we traded down strongly early. And like usual, it finds a bottom and it rallies weakly. And we end up with some kind of sideways kind of day before it's over so and that's what we ended up with so anyway let's uh you can see it here on the daily chart <clears throat> and we've opened up inside this same bar pretty close to where we closed and we're kind of working up a little bit now but none of that will much matter because it'll change before tomorrow uh, it's too early to know much about anything even if it looks real strong early on that or real bearish early on that means nothing uh, but you can see we're just working sideways here. This is a market that's just, uh, nobody's wanting to buy it, nobody's wanting to sell it. Um, it seems like every time we get down here to these lows, some strong buying comes in. As soon as it gets up to highs, strong buying comes in. So uh, just not much going on today. It wasn't news day. There was some strong, uh, actually, yeah, there was some strong uh, uh, PPI type. Uh, stuff along with unemployment claims. It's all just economic stuff. And when you see that, you got to be aware of it and be flat. It, this did, a lot of times this stuff, sometimes it can go haywire, but most of the time you don't get a lot of craziness out of stuff like this. But the way the market is right now, you got to be aware of it and you got to be, you got to plan ahead for it. So know where your news is. Again, if you're a me member of our premium membership, you can download the same news uh, guard that I use for free. And it'll load your news for you every day, and it'll be there when you come in. So, great tool. Uh, if you don't know what it is, at least go look at the news every morning. This will save you a lot of work. It just does it for you automatically. It goes out, fetches it, and puts it on your chart for you, and you know it's there. Only ones I really pay attention to are the green ones. I, I put the red, the, or the red ones, I'm sorry. I put the green ones on there, but I pay very little, if any, attention to them, just so I know what, what's out there in case something does happen. But anyway, let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart and take a look at it and look at the trades. And there's not a lot of trades today. It was it's a lot of mixed trading, and it's hard to trade that stuff. It really is, unless you, unless if you're if it's a range type day with mixed trading, unless it consistently turns at the same resistant spot and consistently turns at the same support stop or spot. It's really hard to trade it because you, you need that consistency. And when it's consistent, it's the easiest trading you'll ever see once you know and understand how to trade it. But if it's not consistent, it's very difficult to trade. So but let's flip over and look at the And you can see the big the chart here. And you can see there's we had two legs down. Um, and then we had another two smaller legs down. Then we just kind of went sideways and we had two legs up. And then we had, uh, then we dropped down here. Of course, we had this trend going up, and we got a break, and then two legs back up, and we got a little bit more. It took a little bit more than two measured legs to make the new high, and then it looks like we had two measured legs down, and then we've been kind of trending higher again since that, since that point. Uh, of course, this is all after five o'clock over here, so it doesn't much matter. That line is the four o'clock close, and the market opens back up over here at five. So um, you can see that your overnight highs up here, your overnight lows, or actually your lows down here, and most of the trading was in the middle, and we closed right in the middle. So pretty typical kind of range type day, even though we had a really strong sell-off that you could trade, and then a really strong, uh, really this wasn't really strong buying. This was just a spike up, and then you had this little weak buying channel that's mostly a lot of sideways stuff and then the break, and but it still played out. So, you know, you play the range where it's at and you play the trends when they're there. If you get an opportunity and sometimes these things just turn on a dime and there's no clear, easy way to get in them without taking a lot of risk. And so you just, it, you're better off to wait until you get a real easy trade. 
and they're out there so wait on the easy trades skip these hard ones because you'll get chopped all to pieces but uh, you see it there and after this chart lesson I'm gonna have a little bonus lesson today so hang around uh, don't go away too soon or you'll miss the little bonus thing so let's get moving because I do want to talk about uh, something from yesterday on yesterday's chart so anyway seven o'clock came as we're kind of rallying uh, making this turn and rallying up here and so with this news you want to be out by 715 and when it kind of settles down you get back in and it didn't really make a whole lot of difference it looked like we're I mean this bar might still be a little bigger if you're trading it you might trade that as a lower high and uh, it's a very bearish bar so maybe you take that trade you would expect at least a, leg, a measure leg down based on that move um, but at very least measure this leg and then this one and, and you would see you still got a long way to go to down here and you can see we pretty much got a measured move for it bounced it went a little further but it's because the market's kind of weak and this turned out to be a spike and channel down but uh, not much in here you can trade um, this is a little just a lot of sideways congestion just not any really good setups this is not a super strong trend here yet uh, we're looking for the measured leg down but you need some good setups and you just don't have anything here that's real clear this trade you might say okay there's a me uh, failed second entry long there you got your new high here first entry second entry uh, maybe it maybe it confirms that trend line maybe I'd drawn it a little off there I mean that still works so that's one you might take but that's a failure that's a very advanced trade most of you shouldn't be interested in that anyway uh, and then following that there was a second entry but by that time look how congested that is and so you got to be careful taking that I mean you're still looking for a new low on this and you might get a measured leg down but you just can't go low right into those or short right into those lows with that anytime you see one two three bars three or more bars stacked side by side and if one of them has a small body or no body like that one that's congestion and the reason we don't trade congestion is because all congestion is is a micro channel oh, I'm sorry a micro range and what do we expect to happen when prices break out of a range we expect them to fail and reverse and you see what happens it fails in reverse <laughs> just like what we teach just like what I just told you yeah it may still go lower but it may not it might reverse and go straight up so you can't take that chance so you can't take that trade and then this is just more of the congestion back in there again so let me draw the little range just so everybody can see it that's how I would have drawn it right there <clears throat> and you can see the little range don't go short there because it's probably going to snap back and it could reverse uh, in this case it turns out to be a breakout pull back short but that's just the first entry uh, it's you it had an inside bar beside that so it's again it's three bars stacked side by side one of them's a doji it could do the same thing again don't take that trade so in this case if you took this one yeah it would have worked but a lot of times it'll reverse and go higher you can't take that chance so don't enter in congestion unless you know exactly what you're doing and you trust your read 100% and most of you can't do that even skilled traders with lots of experience can't do that consistently so uh, sometimes you can understand why the congestion forms and sometimes you can't and here it just looks like people aren't ready the selling hadn't really come in until it hits this and then people start realizing yeah we're going lower and, and then the steam it kind of peels up steam so wait until you get a good trend but anyway we come on down we get a break here two legs back to the EMA that's a textbook second entry uh, the signal bar usually closes into one-third it's not perfect but that's good enough I'm gonna take that trade and look at it go there's, there's uh, it looks a little congested here but it broke out the top so that's counter trend so you're gonna get to go back with the trend that's the way you want to trade it you don't want to trade it where it breaks out this way and fails and reverses on you so you want it to trap traders on the wrong side what are you expecting prices to do here go lower because we're looking for a retest of this low and so we're looking for prices to go lower they might only go down to here because that was a measured move a lot of times you'll see and see I tried to bounce there but it didn't it pushed on through and it made another leg it made a new low and if, when it came back started to make another leg down you'd look for a measured leg based on this one 
because now you got this little spike and channel down. But yeah, that's a nice, pretty much tech book, textbook uh, second entry short. And even though it looks like a little congestion there, let's just draw it so everybody can see it. I'd say it's probably like that. You're getting to go short at the high of the range on a second entry with the trend. And so that's one you might risk. I'm going to risk that one every time. It's clearly two legs back to the EMA. I mean, even though this has the starts of a making of a uh, possible congestion, it's not. It's just not much room to go but much higher. So anyway, this one rockets down. There's another second entry. I drew this arrow so I wouldn't forget to talk about it. People, people have accused me of skipping over trades because they failed. Uh, this one doesn't really fail, but uh, you know, I thought I'd point it out. It's a second entry, and so a lot of you are going to take it because it's a second entry. But look, one, two, three, four, five bars in a row. A couple of them, that one has a tiny body. That's that's probably not a, I'd say that's probably a legitimate bar, and this one's got some stem on both sides, but it's still got enough body. That's really your own one, but you still, it beats congestion. There's three or more bars side by side. And at least one of them has no body. So you can't, there's not any room to that little double bottom. So don't go short there. You see, it doesn't go far and it reverses. Yeah, you still would have got your scalp. And, you know, but if you take a bad trade, eventually it's going to burn you. That's just not a good trade. It reverses and goes higher here. And it's, it's running up. There's a green channel. It comes up here. Uh, it confirms that. New trend line right there gives you even a lower high right here, but guess what? It's still in that green channel. It looks like congestion, and you see it breaks out, fails, comes back. It ends up going lower, but we can't risk that until we get a setup, another setup, and we never really get one, so we just have to skip it. There it goes. Runs down here. Somehow this has moved a little bit. It runs down here. It bounces. And then we just start going sideways. Again, you got another channel running lower. You get a break, and you just get a first entry, and you get a second entry, and it's way down here, right into the support, almost right at the measured move. It looks congested. Three bars in it stacked side by side, and one of them has no body hardly. Um, sit tight. Wait for something better, and you can see it just keeps going sideways. But even if you move that to the very far right, it still looks like congestion. And it's too, it's just too close to the lows to consider that a second entry short that you want to take. And you see it turns out to be congestion. And we're just chopping along. I don't see anything in there I like until finally you make a higher low that's at the bottom of the range where you want to try to get long. In a range like this, you want to get long at the lows and short at the highs. And you really don't have a whole lot of consistent uh, touches off these highs until later over here. And even there, then, they're not real consistent. I would say this should be a little bit higher right there. <clears throat> and then you get another failed breakout. But maybe you buy this higher low. It, it gives you a chance to get long at the lows. It looks like a triple test, really. Uh, maybe you take that one. It's still a little aggressive. I don't know that you could have gotten in it because it gaps over. It does come back, so most likely you get filled on this and you get a good trade out of it. Turns down at the highs, but you don't have enough. That's the, just the second time it's turned down right there. Um, notice how we're making lower highs here each time. A lot of times that you can get it, break out and continue lower here. I kind of thought there was a chance we might break out. You can't go short into those support in case it doesn't. But with that measured move there, you had to be concerned, and then suddenly it reverses. And you get two legs up, and that's a second entry. But again, you're inside that channel. Uh, there's no reason to say that it can't break lower and then turn back up. So just sit tight. And of course, it runs all the way to the other side. No setup down here. It runs all the way to the other side. No setup yet. Notice you made that new high. So you need to at least wait on a lower high. Um, and it runs higher, turns down, then turns back up. Technically, that makes a lower high. I marked that um, just in case 
Uh, I kind of like that because it gives you a big bearish bar inside. Technically, it's not the signal bar. Uh, and this was congested, so you had to wait for this to close. And so maybe you go short there. It gives you another chance with plenty of room to the other side to get short. We've been running back and forth. The overall uh, bias is down. It's a lower high. So maybe you take that trade. Uh, actually, I meant to mark that green, and I've marked it red. Let's, let's change that just so nobody's confused. Because technically, it, once you enter there, you still have to put your stop above that bar. And you won't see me talk about that very often. But in a range, maybe you take that. Especially when you're looking for prices to make a new low. Now, you do have to understand this blue channel. You've already had a close outside here and a new low. But many times, you get two legs down. And this was a range coming across here. So it's probably going to act similar to a range, which it does. F fails on the breakout, comes down here. Fails down here and goes back higher and reverses. But notice this channel coming down. You get your break, a new low. That's just a first entry. Looks a little congested. Uh, it breaks higher and then turns back down. So there's your second entry. But it's definitely congestion by the end. And you see what happens. It, it doesn't go anywhere until it breaks out and fails and reverses on you. Now this one you may take because look how many times you bounce down here. This is easily, you could argue that, you know, you bounce down here enough times maybe you take that trade it's still a little aggressive but it's a nice signal bar inside that closes inside the support where you've bounced multiple times all the way across here and you actually pushed lower here than this last bar so you probably ran some stops on that reverse but it's hard to reverse a bar like that so um, maybe you go long right there like i said it's still a little aggressive but it runs up, you get a close outside. You do get a second entry short right there, but again, it's it's an engulfing bar. I'd wait for it to close, and when it closes, it looks, there's nothing there to take. So when you see it does bounce here, there's a second entry long here, but again, that's congestion. You can't enter. Runs up, there's no close outside this yet, so you can't enter here. And then you're just chopping along sideways. You get the break on this one coming down, new low. And then you make a second entry long on a new high, and it confirms that trend line. And now you've tried to go lower three times here and made a higher low each time. So on that second entry long, if it breaks higher, I'm going with it. We'll probably get another leg up just like, uh, just like one of these maybe, which is what ends up happening. Uh, actually, on this first leg, you've already had it, and you didn't quite have a measured leg up, so it's still probably working on that. And you see... That's what it did. Once it got that measured leg, then it sells off. So pay attention to the measured legs. You know, be careful. Mostly we use these as targets. And once you reach your target, doesn't mean you can't go higher. But be very wary and make sure you got a good setup first. So I like that trade. And then we're just chopping sideways. But notice what happens here. You get a one, two, three, double top. Uh, it's congested, but it, again, it's a range. And so you would expect that. So you would expect prices to turn down right there. So maybe you take that one. It's not a perfect setup, again, because it is a lot of sideways stuff in there. But ranges, you do that. You, you'll have that. The trend is kind of up here, too. But there's still reasons on that triple test to assume you could get a scalp out of that. That's what happens. Then you run down here and you bounce. It looks like you're going to bounce at the bottom. And if prices would have broke higher there, I'd have said go with it. But instead, you get an inside bar that's bearish. So now you got those three bar matching highs. This is really not congestion. It's just not rejection off the support like you would expect. It ends up going higher, but you don't get that instant rejection. Like when this touched right here, it rejected and went straight down. When this touched right here, it rejected and went straight up. It doesn't bounce around down here like these two did for a while. So anyway, turns down. Then you get a second entry long here. Again, it's congested. Um, you this is not really a high or low. It, it Technically, because you get a lower high right here and it goes higher, you could call that a high or low, but you needed this to come down to be a high or low. It's, it's, it's just a break higher, so it's not really a high or low because it didn't make a new low right there. It's still part of the same move. And, of course, you break out up here and go straight to the upper side of the trend channel and turn down. So where do you think prices are most likely going to be successful going back to the other side or back to the other side of the range? It takes them a minute, but that's what happens. First time we just bounce off the midline. But that's a pretty strong move down. There's no setup there. There's a second entry long, but it's right into the resistance. 
we just came off the high, just sit tight. Yeah, it would have worked, but you don't know that ahead of time. There is a triple test right here that gives you another bar inside, but it's just so congested. Uh, it's a little, you can't, there's still some buying coming in here. It's too early. You just got to wait. And you see it really starts to kind of make lower lows and slightly lower highs, and then finally it moves on down. But there's no setups in there. There's nothing I would want to take. There's nothing that attracts me. There's no setup we teach other than maybe that one right there. You might take that trade, but because of the congestion, I would skip it. Runs down, get a strong channel all the way down. No real setup to enter there. You can't enter way down here this far away from the EMA. Um, and then it reverses. And you would expect prices to snap back pretty quickly. But I'd wait on a higher low or something similar to that. It doesn't... <coughs> Excuse me, the pollen's out now, the pines are, the pine, the yellow dust is everywhere, and uh, so I've, I get my annual uh, congestion problems, so you just have to bear with me, I try not to cough I'm into the microphone, I try to catch it, but sometimes I just can't catch it, so I apologize uh, if it happens, but anyway, you get two legs up, the second entry short, and it quickly fails, maybe you go along there, because you're expecting, uh, you had this Blue channel, and that's the first break. So where are you expecting prices to go? Probably to make a new high, which is exactly what they do before they sell off again. They go just enough to make a new high off the high that channel made, and there's pretty much two legs up. It actually goes further than a measure leg because it has to to make that new high. And then you can see the buying. People are still thinking prices are going higher, uh, but the... the Expected directions lower, and that takes you into 230, which changes everything. But uh, maybe you take this failure right here. You would enter one tick above that bar because that's where the failure occurred, but your stop has to go down here again. By the time that bar forms and closes, it's congestion. So it's a little risky, but you can see that channel still in play. And guess what? It runs up and makes a new high by one tick. And then it gets a two-legged correction, fails out the bottom and reverses and makes another measured leg up. Actually, more than a measured leg. Uh, there's no way to enter here. Again, it looks like a failed second entry short here, but it doesn't set up properly. It doesn't even come back and test the breakout here, much less the EMA. So if it doesn't, it's not a... It just looks like congestion again. Yeah, it works and takes off, but you can't risk that. You actually get a little overshoot here, and you get two legs down. So just rem remember, if you get an overshoot on the other side of a channel, a lot of times you don't get a retest. Most, sometimes you will. There, you don't know. You just have to follow the price action and see what happens. But we don't get a retest here. Price has tried like crazy to make a retest, and they couldn't, and then turned out. But we're chopping across here. Uh, that one's tempting, but it's right into the midline. But when you get this next one and get a, it breaks higher and turns down. Closes down here as long as you got room to get out. Take that trade. And it runs on down because we may be reversing here. It runs on down and it's tempting to go long there, but you can't. That's congestion. This channel's still in play. You're probably going to make a retest for the low and probably a measured leg down. And if you measure them, they're probably measured legs down. I'd say that's almost to the tick right there. Actually, it is to the tick. Two perfect measured legs, and then it reverses again. I mean, this stuff is like clockwork, but you have to learn to see it. And you have to follow the rules, and you have to be patient. You have to be disciplined. And there's another second entry right there. Notice that low. You get a first entry. You move up, and you get a second entry. But look how sideways and congestion. Look at those three, bar, those three matching lows. It's telling you something's going on there. In this case, it's because... Prices are trying to go higher, and each time they're losing steam, and they're closing lower, and then suddenly falls out, and you get that second leg down, and then it reverses again. You can't pay much attention to what happens out here, because a lot of this is short covering, and people closing up, you know, wrapping up their trades for the day, the day traders and things. That usually happens around 3 o'clock, so you can't pay a whole lot of attention to this stuff uh, out here. But there it is. Again, you got this... Two legs down, but on the second channel, you get a break and two legs down on it. Then you're chopping sideways and you get two legs up. 
Uh, you still got a channel working up here even on those two legs, but you get a break of that channel and two legs up and you make a new high and then you get two legs down and then you're moving higher again. So study those charts and pay attention to what you're looking at here and watch that congestion. And that leads me into the next situation I want to talk about. I'm gonna, let me get another chart up here and we'll talk about it real quick. Okay, here's a chart from yesterday. This was from our chart yes, lesson yesterday. I didn't still have this chart marked up, so I wanted it to look exactly like it looked yesterday. So I went to the YouTube and I found this trade and I saved the screen and here it is. You can see it here. We're in, we got the big blue channel working down. It's two-tiered. And this was another move, strong move down within that blue Prices had come off the top, way up here, further up you can't see, and they're working down, and they just bounced off the low. So before we ever, this is what we're going to talk about right in here. So before we ever even get to that, seeing what I just showed you, you already got a close outside of this green channel and a move to a new low, and you just bounced off the main trend channel line of the main pattern. So where would you expect prices to go now? to the midline and the minimum, and probably back to this trend line. So that should be your train of thought. Now, you don't want to go long until you get a setup, but that should be your train of thought. So we're, we got a close outside. We got more than two legs down. We come back to the trend line, and we just and we push through it and fail. Then we run up again. We make a lower high. We made a higher low here, but we make a lower high here. And we came down and we bounced and we made another higher low. So we're not making higher highs and higher lows and we're not making lower highs and lower lows. We're just kind of chopping sideways and you can see the EMA going from steep to sideways to down to sideways and kind of flattening out here. So what we want to talk about is this trade right, right here. A trader sent me his chart and he chastised me about this trade said that it said it was a great setup and that I should have marked it and then I'm just skipping trades and I'm only marking trades I'm not marking tra good trades that fail I'm only marking the ones I want to mark to to make it look like they're all winners well let me clarify if you haven't read the disclaimer at the beginning of every video I post please go read that disclaimer I don't mark my trades I'm not talking about my trades I'm showing you trades that set up on our chart each day that that are good trades based on our strategy and our rules so please understand that I'm not marking my trades why would I come in here and just pick out trades that are losers and, and say okay take this trade my desire is to show you the trades that set up using our strategy and so you can study them and find them yourself it's simple that there's nothing more to this I'm not trying to I'm not hiding anything from anybody. We've already had that conversation. I'm not glossing over good trades that are losers. If you think this is a good trade, you don't know what you're, you don't, you can't read this chart properly. Anytime you see one, two, three bars or more stacked side by side, at least one of them has no body or a tiny body, that is congestion. And we're already expecting a reversal. So when you got this second entry here, this thing should have taken off. It should have at least made a measured move down. It shouldn't have started going sideways right there. It shouldn't have found resistance between the EMA and a support line right there. So this is a small congestion. This is congestion, so it's a small range. So what do you expect is going to happen when prices break out there? What, about, what, how do, what do I say is going to happen? It's going to fail. Even if it's only temporarily, it's going to fail. So why in the world would you go short there with three matching bars on three higher lows in congestion when you're expecting prices to reverse? It's simple as that. And there was some confusion here. Let me let me talk about this too. There's confusion here about a higher low. A lot of people kept saying it's a higher a lower high, and I may have said something about a lower high because it's lower than this high, it's lower than this high, so it's a lower high. But it's not a lower high in the sense that we trade lower highs. So make sure that's, so I want to clarify that because I think me and the trader, the same trader got kind of uh, off on that. So it, we just misunderstood each other. 
and some other trade and I didn't realize that until I talked about it in our forum and I had the same conversation with a couple of other traders then all of a sudden the light went off that people are misunderstanding what I mean by lower high there's lower highs all over this chart but I'm talking about a tradable lower high this would be the only tradable lower high and it's a second entry so maybe you take that trade I marked it green you, you might see that as uh, a red trade it's close I only marked it green simply because it's a first in, it is a first entry second entry but we never retest we never got a close outside and a retest unless you assume it's all in that bar and that just looks like congestion so there's a chance this could break lower and go high right here because we're expecting prices to go higher I already told you that if you're reading this chart you know we got a break and new low and now we're not going lower on a second entry we just start going sideways something has changed so you, you got to be aware of that you got to watch the congestion it'll get you it can get you just like this one I talked about this one I'm pretty sure I don't remember what I said about it but you got to be very careful of that one because it's congestion it's a second entry but you could also argue that's a failed second entry long but it's not a it doesn't set up good same thing here the only trade you could take off this right here would be a failed second entry long but when you got those three matching lows and all those bars working sideways you can't take because otherwise this is just a third entry notice the low first entry second entry third entry and we don't take third entries so you can't argue this is a second entry uh, you can't trade it as a lower high so the only good setup here you could argue for would be the failure and there's only one leg back there's no leg back here it's just sideways so you would need another leg back and then it turned down and then you say you might say okay it's a failure and you might take it but you can't take it out of that it's not a good trade especially when you're expecting prices to reverse now because we just came off the low of the rank of the channel that's that's the key there once you hit that low, it doesn't mean you couldn't come back to the midline. It doesn't mean you couldn't turn down here, but you want a good setup. That's the only one you might consider right there, that second entry. And it's not an ideal second entry. So when this broke lower and failed, you can almost guarantee this thing's going back to that midline. And it may go all the way back up here. So take that trade to the long side. It's a trap. That was set up and designed. And... It, I guess it, part of his argument was that uh, I guess wherever his discord is where they trade him and the experienced traders had decided that this was an algorithm and they started buying here and went higher well I could have told you there was a good chance we were going higher way down here and I didn't need to see anything about an algorithm or anything because I know what prices do and I read I know when it hits this low side the odds are it's going up that's what prices do they undulate between support and resistance and that's what they do on the bigger ones just like they do on these small ones high low high low until you get a break and look at this channel you're working up you get a break two legs a new high you actually get your first break of the blue channel and then off it goes because we expect a retest of the lows so this is not a good setup if anybody told you this was a good setup they misread it I mean it happens even good traders misread the chart but this is not real hard to see here and to prove it I posted it in my forum and said hey everybody give me your input and most of the most of the traders said hey that's congestion you know it's it's not a great trade and when they saw and I didn't show the big picture either that was without them even knowing we just came off the lows and could be going the highs all I showed them was this channel and, it, and the, actually the trader had misdrawn it because he drew it away over here and you didn't have a break yet this was off of his trend line but I don't believe that's right if you look at my channel I drew it like I always draw it right down through there and then you get a break if I maybe I'm not exactly on that high but if I was it'd be even steeper and you'd have a bigger break there so you have to know what you're doing you have to be able to read this chart and if anybody tells you you can't figure this stuff out don't believe them so frustrating you know and you, you see people and not only just just remember what prices do they undulate from support to resistance and they don't always go straight there just like here they, they hesitated a little bit and they went up and they finally got there but they got there and that's what you were expecting to happen 
just like when you got the green channel inside this blue one, when it when you got a close outside, you expected it to make a new low. That might have been, I think that's a double bottom there. So that was another reason. Maybe you expect that to push down a little bit more. It to me that's risky. I I can't remember if I marked that after the fact or during the trade, uh, before or whatever. But but that's congestion. So you got to be real careful. Sometimes you know why congestion is there. Sometimes you don't. Here you don't know. It's just telling you something's changed. We're not seriously dropping anymore. When we got this second entry right here, this thing should have went lower. And it didn't. It just started going sideways. That is a huge red flag that says, okay, something's changed. Doesn't mean you take this long at all, because that you got to be good. You got to be good at this to know. Hey, I better go long right here because this is probably going to happen. But you don't take any trade. You just wait for more information. That's what I. That's what I try to help people understand. You don't just take a, trades to take trades. You wait for the best trades, the sure things. You take them, and and then you sit and wait, and you be pay, and you're patient. And you might have to wait an hour or two, and you may have to wait longer than that, and you may not even see a trade you, that you feel 100% about. But if you don't feel 100% about a trade, do not take it. Are you taking trades for the thrill of it, for the fun of it, to see if you're right, or are you taking trades to make money? Personally, I'm taking trades to make money. So I'm only taking the best trades, the sure things, and that's not a sure thing. And I tried to help this trader see that. He insisted that... This was a great trade, and I skipped over it because it was a loser. <laughs> and, you know, the only thing I can say to that is you're wrong. You can either believe me or you don't. If you don't believe me, that's okay. Go find somebody you can believe in and follow them. Listen, I'm going to say this. It's already 40 minutes, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here. So much of what we do is between your ears. You have to be confident in yourself. You have to be confident in your reads. And this trader said he's a good chart reader. He said that several, he said a whole bunch of experienced traders ex agreed with him. I can tell you right now, good chart readers, profitable traders did not get fooled right there. I promise you they didn't. There might have been one or two that are close that got fooled there. But experienced traders that have 25 plus years of trading did not get trapped right there. I promise you that. Guarantee you that. And if somebody told you they're an experienced trader and they got trapped there, they might be an experienced trader, but they're not a chart, a good chart reader because they would know to stay out of that. So, And I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. I'm not trying to toot my horn and say I'm better than anybody else. I'm just telling you what I know and what from my experience. And you can believe that or you can believe somebody else. You can say Max full of it. He thinks he knows everything. I'm just sharing with you my knowledge. And my knowledge tells me you don't enter right there. And so I didn't mark that trade for a reason. Not because I'm trying to skip over great trades that turn out to be losers. If you think that's a great trade that turned out to be a loser, you got a long way to go. That's all I got to say. I'm sorry. I'm not again I'm not calling anybody out or stepping on anybody's toes. That's not a good trade. And I got students in my forum that saw it and commented exactly like I just told you. So some people have learned to see it that are in my newbies right now. They're in my forum. Some of them have been there a little while, but they've learned to see it. There was a couple of them says, oh, I might take it. And there might have been one or two that thought it was a good trade. But for the most part, everybody agreed, said this. I didn't give them any context. All I did was post the chart and say, would you take this trade? And I let them think it was just a little exercise because I didn't want to influence anybody's thinking. And several of them saw it exactly like I saw it. So somebody's listening to me. Somebody's learning. Maybe they can only see it after the fact. But if they keep on, they're going to eventually they'll see it in real time and they'll be making money. So, but back to what I was trying to tell you that I'm going to close up. So much of this is between your ears. You have to believe in your system. And how do you how do you how do you get up enough confidence to believe in your system? You sim trade it every day, and you prove it to yourself. I don't know if this trader was trading live. I bet he was. I bet he was copycatting who he was watching, and that guy took a loser, and he probably copycatted it, and he had a loser, and he was mad. He was mad, and he had to find somebody to be mad at because the person that took the trade told him it was a good trade, 
And that's okay. Maybe he thinks it's a good trade. I'm not calling him out. That's his that's his choice. I don't even know if he's using my strategy, but that's not a good trade based on what we do. So that trader was wrong. So I guess the the guy that sent me the email had nobody to be mad at but me. So he comes over and takes it out on me. <laughs> that's the only thing I can come up with. Because trust me, I'm not trying to mislead anybody. I'm not trying to skip over. If I see a trade on here that's that that I think would trip up a lot of really good traders, including myself. I usually point it out. They're rare. They really are rare. But when I see one, I will point it out. If you go back and watch all my videos, you'll see where I've pointed them out before. Nobody, the chart never lies. What happens is we, as humans, we're not infallible. We make mistakes. We misread. We get overconfident. We do silly things, and we have losers. But that's our fault. It's not the chart. It's not the strategy. It's not the setup. It's us. And you got to accept that. If you don't accept that, you're never going to succeed at this because so much of it is mental. It's between the two ears and that space between your two ears. That's a powerful space. And it works against you. Trade Prices don't move based on... Common sense says, okay, we're going down, 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 down. We made a lower high, lower high. Look how bearish that. Common sense says, go short. But I've told you a thousand times... I can't tell you how many times I've said this. Prices do not move based on common sense, and that's why this is so hard. This is so hard. You have to learn the rules. You have to know what to expect, and you follow them, and it works. It's really as simple as that. Of course, that's not easy to, to, to get straight in your head, and so much of this is mental. It, it, another trader sent me something today. He's reading some book about the mental aspect of golf, and I've said this before if you've never heard it. I'm a golfer, so I, I know how much discipline and concentration and how on your game you got to be and how so much of golfing is mental. Well, golfing and trading relate a lot. And so maybe that's, you know, I'm a golfer. I was a golfer long before I became a trader. I've been golfing for, I'm no, and I'm not a scratch golfer. I'm not a great golfer, but I've golfed enough and I have enough experience that I know a lot about golfing. I've hit enough shank balls and chased enough balls out of the woods, and I've hit enough great shots, too, to know what golfing takes. And it, it takes a lot of mental fortitude. you got to be on your game. you got to be zoned in. And trading is just like that. So if, you're, if you've ever golfed and you know that mental part of golf, you can translate that over to trading and it'll make sense. If you've never golfed, it won't make a bit of sense. And I'm sorry, it's not everybody's a golfer. But that's the one I know that I can give you. But this is mental, and so you you have to believe in your strategy. You have to believe in yourself. But how do you prove that? If you try to prove that trading live, guess what's going to happen? You're going to go broke first. Don't do it. I don't know if this trader was even trading live. He may not have been. I'm guessing he was by how mad he was, and how convinced he was that, that it's my fault that he had a loser there. But, because I skipped over it and I knew it was a good trade and I didn't talk about it. Well, it's not a good trade. Uh, it's the only thing I can tell you. And I didn't skip over it on purpose. I'd never do that. I have no reason to trick anybody or fool anybody. I do this because I like it because it helps me. The, reason, the whole reason I started doing these chart lessons is because that's how you get better. You study this chart every day. You study your trades every day. And you start to see this stuff. It takes a while, yes. But that's why I started doing these originally for myself. And eventually, people started. I never planned to have 30,000 subscribers. Never intended, never thought I'd get over 500. But we got almost 30, we got around 30,000 now. And people just came and started watching it. Next thing you knew, it blew up, and people were, you know, saw that it worked, and people like it because it works if you learn it. And people think they know it, and they don't. And this trader said he was a pretty good chart reader. Maybe he is, except maybe he doesn't understand congestion. Maybe outside of that, he's a great chart reader. But but just based on what he's telling me, he's got he's not there yet. And I hope he's on the simulator, because that's how you prove it to yourself. That's how you get confidence in yourself and the strategy. When you can double a $10,000 SIM account, 
then you've proven to yourself you can do it. If you can do it on the sim, the only thing stopping you from doing it in real life is between your ears. And that's another hurdle. you got to get past that. But that's how you prove it to yourself at least and how you prove the strategy works. And if you can't prove it there, don't try to do it live. I'm trying to save you money. That's what 90% of the people fail at this. And the reason is, first, they have unrealistic expectations. They don't understand what we talk about, about reading the chart. This chart tells you a story the whole way through. But you have to learn to see that. So until you learn to see that, it's not going to make much sense. If you walked in a room tomorrow and everybody's speaking Russian, guess what? You're going to be lost. Do you think you're going to be able to conduct business or do a business deal with a bunch of Russians when you can't even speak Russian? You can't even understand what they're saying, much less talk back to them? It's no different on this chart. The skilled traders can read this chart. They know it like the back of their hand. They understand price movements. They know the fake outs. They understand what's going on, and they can read it. And so they can conduct business on here and make money. When you can do that, you'll be able to conduct business on here and make money too. But until you learn fluently, and that's the, the other thing about it, this thing is not a clear English or clear Spanish or clear Russian. It's not a clear language. It's always a little foggy. It's like broken English. And sometimes it's a little hard to understand. You have to interpret it. And how do you learn to interpret it? Because you get more experience interpret it. When you hear everybody's broken English over time, you know, if you, I don't know if you've ever worked with somebody that speaks broken English or whatever your language is, a broken version of it. And when you first talk to them, you can't understand anything they say. But if you hang around them a while, you start to understand them. It's the same thing with this chart. It's speaking a broken language that if you study and practice, you're going to pick it up and you'll understand exactly what it's saying and you'll be able to communicate with it and understand it. And, and if you can't see that, you're not there yet. But I promise you, it, it talks to you and it tells you something. doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. It doesn't mean you won't take a loser. Everybody gets losers. That's part of this job. So for him to say that I, I, I'm trying to say I never have losers or for anybody to say that, they're wrong. I've never said nobody has losers. But what I can promise you, if you have a loser and you know how to read this chart and you study it, you can figure out nine times out, 99% of the time you can, you can figure out where you went wrong. I bet the trader that took this, in the, the leader of that room that took this, I bet he can look at it now and figure out exactly what he did wrong. But he would just missed it in real time because that happens. We're human. We're infallible. But if you don't make mistakes and you don't get distracted, I'm going to tell you right now, it's hard to do a, a trading room because the minute you know somebody's watching you, you start thinking different. That's why I don't record every trade I make. Because when that recorder turns on, I suddenly start thinking different. And it starts interfering with my trading. My mental capacity goes on me. I got, I'm thinking, well, I sure can't take a loser here because I'm showing everybody how good I am. And so that thought process instantly changes how you trade. So you can't trade in a Discord and be good at it. Sure, you might you might get by, but you're going to have more losers than you would if you were trading on your... This, trading is a lonely, lonely profession. And, and I get it. I, I, I've been, I did the same thing everybody else does. I wanted to get with people that traded. I wanted to talk to them during my trading. And after a year or two of that, I wasn't any better. And I was more confused than ever. I'm like, what the heck? And I said, I'm going to figure this out. And I went and I got charts and I started studying. I, I met an old timer. I knew him already. I went to him. I said, just show me a few things here where I'm off. And he showed me some things. He was a tape reader, tape reader originally, and when he retired, he started trading on charts. And it's easier to do it on charts than it is to do it on tape because I got a visual picture here. So and he showed me a few things, and, I w and that's all that happened. He didn't sit down and I traded with him. I mean, I watched him take some trades I could never figure it out. So I went and studied it on my own. And I figured it out. This is a lonely profession. Keep it lonely because if you go try to learn from other people, it, sure, somebody has to teach you the strategy. Somebody has to teach you what to look for. It's like teaching you how to read music. Somebody has to teach you how to read music. But once you know how to read music, guess what? You're not going to learn how to play and get better until you just go practice. Somebody, You can't watch somebody play the piano and get better. You just got to go practice. So I'm teaching you the music here. I'm teaching you the notes. But you got to go learn on your own. Nobody's going to show you that. And if somebody in a Discord says they are, I mean, I don't know any of those places that are ever 
successful. I really don't. They're successful at taking everybody's money and creating all kind of craziness and infighting. And I mean, that's what happens in every one of them. There's always some know-it-alls that know everything, and they mislead you, and they teach you the wrong things, and they make you think they're great traders. And I'm not saying that they're not great traders. I'm just saying what happens. Because I know the minute they know people are watching, they're trading different than they really trade. Whether they want to or not, or whether they think they are or not, it affects your trading. That's my experience with it. And that's why I don't do it. It doesn't help anybody even if I did do it. Because you can't learn to trade watching somebody else trade. Yeah, you might copy their tra trades and shirt tell them and make some money like that. That could be done. But if you're trading and you think people are watching you, it, it changes everything. It's not the best, it's not a greatest deal as people think it is. And, and like I said, trading is a lonely profession and you need to keep it that way. If you really want to learn, you need to find the strategy. I, I'm teaching you a strategy that works. If you don't like mine, go find somebody that you like, that fits you, that you think works. But the first thing is you got to have a strategy that works. But then after that, it's up to you to learn it. Nobody can teach it to you. They can teach you, the, like I said, the notes, the music. I can teach you the rules, I can teach you what to look for and all that, but it's up to you to put it all together through practice. And that's the key to all of this. This thing's 50 minutes, it's going to be an hour long video, it's crazy. I didn't mean to do this, I didn't mean to get back off on another tangent, but it's just lately it's just been, and, and all this is coming from one discord, and and I know those people are great people, They don't. I don't think they're, none of them have ever said anything negative about me, other than the people in there that, that are failing, maybe like this guy, uh, but it's where the rumors start, it's where everything's coming from, and uh, it's just gotten to be crazy. Again, the people that run the place, have, as far as I know, have been told they've never said anything po uh, negative about me, they've had nothing, but they always give me credit, and that's great, I appreciate that, I have nothing against y'all, but um, it's the people coming from there that are stirring up all the mess and slinging all the mud and it's you know usually i don't even let this stuff bother me but it, it just it keeps coming from the same place and so I, I felt i had to address it and then i just thought this was a good learning opportunity today because it really puts it straight out there this guy's insisting that him and some other experienced traders think this was a great trade and that i'm covering up my trade now they didn't say that he said this that i'm that i should have marked this because this was a great trade and i just skipped over because it, it was a loser well, welcome to the real world. <laughs> this is not a great trade. The writing's on the wall. It's all over the place. You just have to know what to look for. And I just gave it to you I, I, as clearly as I could. I did a 20-minute chart lesson on this one trade. Maybe that's the way we ought to be doing it so you can learn more. I don't know. Instead of going through the trades, maybe I'll just pick out a trade every day and do a 20-minute chart lesson on it. Maybe you'll learn more that way. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I've never claimed to be a great teacher. All I've ever claimed is I got a strategy that works and I've wanted to share it with people to help people. That's all I've ever claimed. I've never, I've tried to keep my trading separate from it so we don't have those arguments and fights when people, when I, you know, if I tell you what I, what my trading results are, I'm a liar, there's no, people can't do that, it's impossible. Trust me, there's people doing it every day. It's about 10% of the trading. 10% of the people in the market are doing it. The rest of them are all donators. And and maybe they're only donators because they haven't got there yet. But there are donators. The market has to have donators. If there weren't people coming in donating, and they'd run out of money and the trade all the and it'd just be the experienced profitable traders taking each other's money back and forth. That's all there would be. So we need donators. But I don't want to track people in here to take their money or to make a donator right up. I, I'll tell you right up front, you're, you're, until you learn to read this chart, you're going to be a donator. Don't trade live. I say it every day, all the time. So it's, I'm not trying to take anybody's money. I'm not trying to track people here for that reason. I just want to help people learn how to trade and understand. I want people to get the truth because you don't get the truth. Most everybody out there is trying to scam you out of your money. They want to sell you something, and it's hogwash. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm off a soft soap board today. My soapbox, not bored. I don't know. I'm so flustered here. 
I get passionate about this, and I apologize. And you know, last time people could said they could hear my frustration. I'm really not even frustrated. I'm just passionate about it. I love training. I love helping people. I made a promise that I was going to do this. I'm sticking to it. I got a time date. I've already told people that when that time comes, Max gone. You know, maybe I'll change my mind and when that time comes, but uh, I, I doubt it. I uh, made my commitment, I'm sticking to it, and all I want to do is help people. If you like what we have here, I, I, I hope you do. If you can learn something, please come learn something. If you don't like what we do, if you think I'm scamming you, if you think I'm passing over good trades, go to the other site or where. go find the site you trust somebody and you like what they're doing. One thing I can promise you, though, if anybody that's making money is a day trader, they may not call it price action trading. They may not say they're reading the chart, but I promise you this. They've done this long enough that they understand price movements. They don't get fooled by common sense, and they can basically read this chart. And again, they may not call it price action trading. They may not call it chart reading, but if they consistently make money and they're in the top 10% of all traders, they can read this chart. That's the only holy grail available. There's no other holy grail. There's no, there's no indicator. There's no software. There's, there's no pattern. There's no special setup that's going to consistently make you money every day so that you can do this for the rest of your life and make money every day. Trust me on that. I know. It took me a long time to figure it out. But anyway, I'm done for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. I love everybody out there. Good trades to everybody. I'm gone. I'll see you next week. I'm out of here.